All right. Thank you for that opening statement. Appreciate you. All right. So now we're entered to our cross-examination portion of this debate. Once again, it'll be a total of 60 minutes. Each party will get 30 minutes. Uh, after 10 minutes expire, we will transition to the next person. He will ask for 10 minutes and so forth and so forth. Cool. And 60 minutes totally expire. And then uh, we'll go to close statement. So with that said, Taylor Gray, you're up first to cross-examine Miles for 10 minutes. Okay, cool. Yeah. I want to go. I want to go. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to try and get to as much of this as I can. Um, let's see. Um... So I didn't really hear, like I said a little bit in my opening, I didn't really hear a case for um, how atheism accounts for objective morality. I heard a lot of claims about um, Christianity um, and, and assertions that Christianity is inconsistent. Um, so I guess my first question would be, um, what's one thing that you know to be objectively wrong and how do you know it? Uh, I know that moral relativism is objectively wrong because it's self-contradictory. Okay, and, uh, and uh, I know absolute nothingness is wrong because something exists. Okay, and how do you know that? Uh, because it's of the law of non-contradiction. And where does that come from in um, an atheistic framework? It's so, self-evident. Uh, okay, so are you a naturalistic materialist? Uh, probably. Do you essentially believe that all that exists is what you can experience through your senses? No. So you believe in There's, you believe in like in do you believe that human beings have a spirit? No. So do you believe only all that exists is the physical world? Uh, that's all we've been able to demonstrate so far. But there are things we can measure without uh, being able to without the human senses. That is okay. So um, how did you say that you know that um, what was what was the one thing that you said that you know for certain? Uh, basically, anything that contradicts itself is a contradictor. Is a contradiction. How did, okay, so where did the law of non-contradiction come from in the uh, atheistic worldview? It's just self-evident. Something cannot be what it's not. So if I were to say it's just self-evident that God exists, he exists, would you accept that as evidence? No, because you can't demonstrate it. Okay, so how would you demonstrate the law of non-contradiction? Well, this microphone is not a giraffe. Okay, so are you utilizing your senses then to to make that assertion? Uh, yeah. So how do you know that your senses then are working properly? We um, don't. So you could be wrong then is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, you could too. Well, right, but you saying that is, do you not see how that's contradictory? So that goes no. against, well, it, it is because you said that you said that your senses could be essentially wrong about the one thing that you claim that you do know. Yeah, and if but that's that... the case, then claiming that I could be as well, you could be wrong about that. Yeah, but the, our senses don't uh, actually affect the law of non-contradiction at all. It works on con concepts. Right, but do you not see how you're utilizing your senses to say that? No, because a concept doesn't use any senses. Right, but it, you okay? So you're assuming things like um, rationality. You're assuming things like logic. Yeah, you, you or you brought up logic a lot too in your opening statement too. So I guess the same as the law of non-contradiction. I know you said that it's kind of self-evident, which again is it is a it's what's called a vicious circle. So you're peeling inside of yourself, and if you could be wrong about that, then how do you know that you're right really about anything? Well, I didn't say I could be wrong about uh, logic. I just said I could be wrong about sensory input because we could be in the matrix or something, but logic still exists within right, but the you matrix. Said, right, but you said the one thing that you do know is that things can't contradict things, that the law of non-contradiction is valid. Yes. So, valid. so where does that come from in the atheistic worldview? It's a transcendental. It's something that, for example, could the universe have existed and not existed at the same time in the same place in the same way? No. Okay. So where do you, how do you account for that in an evolutionary worldview? It's a transcendent. It's not physical. Well, this has nothing to do with evolution. R well, you right. The evolution is false and the answer well, would still be the same. Well, it does because that's the foundation that you're standing on. So how does your worldview account for immaterial things like that uh let's just assume uh that evolution is false for this debate because it doesn't affect anything it's not part of this uh, any of my arguments here 
but it's part of your foundation. That's what you're standing on. It's one of your fundamental no. building blocks. I mean, that's it's part. Of, it's a fundamental part of your worldview. No, it's it's not part a fundamental part of my worldview personally, and it's not at all a part of my arguments here. Um, my argument is fundamentally based on logic. Right, but and there's there's a to, uh, right, but to get to that point, there has to be underlying things that you're standing on. Neither of us are neutral right now. You have a view and a lens that you view the world through. So the the real question is who's being consistent? Well, so logic evolution is has to be a part of this because it is a part of the platform that you're ultimately standing on. Well, I, I don't believe logic comes from evolution, and there no, are arguments no, no, I, that I, morality can come from evolution. Um, and the way that morality evolved, our sense of morality evolved, has nothing to do with any of my arguments. Okay, so where did the law of logic then come from in your naturalistic worldview? Uh, it would be the same answer probably that I would give, or that you would give when I asked you where did God come from. So you would say, so then you would, so then you would, so you would appeal to the, the law of logic then being a supreme being of some sort? If you want to use the word being loosely, I suppose. So, because the, the the difference would be is I would I'm a presuppositionalist, so I would go to or I would say that without God, we couldn't even be having this conversation right now. Would you say that then without logic, we wouldn't be able to have this conversation right now? Yeah. Okay. So you would say that you would equate logic to being on the same platform as God, right? No. Okay. So explain that. So, I mean, if God uses logic, then he can use logic, but uh, I don't see how you're equating God with logic. Well, no, no, I'm asking just you, assuming because, that. Because, well, you said that you said that you could pose logic to me the same way that I would say God or how oh, did, yeah. how did, so th that's what I'm saying. So if you're going to so, say that, then, then I, that would be that, that would be logic is your God. But even outside of that, to get back to, well, well if I could explain a little bit, um, okay. I mean, I think we can both agree that there has to be a fundamental floor basis for the universe. Like, there's something there. You you would think it's God, and I think it's just some sort of logical, something that is logical that perhaps defines logic itself. But That's correct. But I would say that God is the starting point. I wouldn't say that it's something we can reason to. I would say that without God, we wouldn't even be ha able to have the conversation right now. So that's the difference. So that's why I, I was asking you, um, is is logic then just a basal assumption that you have? Uh, it's not so much an assumption because we can just demonstrate it self-evidently. Right. But it in works. order. OK, so this goes back to what I was saying earlier then. So in order to do that, you're using your senses. So why are you assuming the reliability of your senses? And this is, again, where evolution comes into play, because if you're just random chance over billions, millions of years, then how can you trust any of your senses or any of your thoughts? For all you know, your thoughts could just be mutations. They could be misfirings going off in your brain. Yeah, but the same problem applies to any theistic proposition. But see, in order to even make that claim, you're using your senses. You're using these abstract truths to make that claim. You could be wrong about the claim that you just made. Yeah, you see I the problem? You, you see the folly with that? Yeah, I mean, w we could all be living in the matrix, but we make right, some you, fundamental right, right, but that's assumptions. Your, right, but that's your position. That's that's your position. That's not my position. You so, could in order, be, so in order for you to be consistent, you would have to say that, yes. But for me, absolutely not. There's certain things that I know for certain that I can make with absolute certainty that is consistent with the platform I stand on. So in order for you to actually be consistent, you would have to say, yeah, I could be wrong about everything I claim to know. But the problem is, is you do know things, but it's inconsistent with how you do know, know those things. And I'd make the argument, which I know it's not my time to, to answer whatever. I'd make the argument that that's because you're made in the image of God. But real quick, um, I know our time is running out here. Um, we got one minute. In your discussion with SDG Apologetics about seven months ago, you said, Objective morality is something that can be reasoned to. That was at the 42 minute, 52 second mark. Do you still affirm this? Objective morality can be reasoned to? Yes. Okay. So how do you know that your reasoning faculties, again, are working properly when you say that? And how is that objective? Because if it can be reasoned to, then is it, how do you know that there's the, how do you know that the standard that you're arriving at is actually objective? What if somebody else arrived at, oh, I don't know, we should eat our neighbor instead of love our neighbor. Well, that would be subjective. Um, 
and I went over that with the uh, the freedom position. Um, that would just, that would diminish freedom, so that would be immoral. Um, right, but says who? Well, logic. You can reason to it. Uh, right, from so the base that, position of right, but what, that, that begs that begs the question. So you're assuming your position without actually demonstrating it, because what if I reason to something totally different? How do we know which one of us is correct? Well, you can subject it to logic. I mean, we live we could be having the our senses could be bad but you know we can we can only work with the information that we have no matter right, what but, position we're working with right but do you not see the folly in that because that means you really can't trust anything you're just making you're essentially shooting at phantoms everything but that's not everything to my position well it is if you reject god because you can't make any claims to certainty but see that's what i'm saying you do actually know things I know that you know things, but it's just inconsistent with what you claim to stand on. All right, that's 10 minutes right there. All right, uh, Tyler, it is your time. 10 minutes for examination of uh, Miles. All right, so I would ask, how does God eliminate uncertainty at all? What do you mean? How does belief in God eliminate your the uncertainty that your senses may be diluted? Like, you might be hallucinating Anything. Well, no, because God has made a re God has revealed things in His Word such that they can, we can know them for certain. So God's actually designed me and designed my senses. Now, obviously, yeah. there's obviously there's issues with, um, say, somebody who's mentally handicapped. But it's consistent with the worldview that I stand on to say that God designed me in His image. Therefore, I'm to reflect um, and called to rather reflect the image of God, and God is a reflection. Um, or rather logic, reason, rationality, those sorts of things are a reflection of God's mind. So what if you're just imagining that? Well, I know that I'm not because God has spoken in his word. How do you know that that wasn't a hallucination? Because God has said so. How do you know that was really him? Because God has spoken. How do you know it was God, though, is what I'm asking. What do you mean? It could have been I... someone who said, knock, knock, I'm God, but it's really the devil. No, because God's word has spoken about who the devil is. How do you know that wasn't the devil? Because I can trust my senses. How can you trust your senses if you can hallucinate? Well, it would probably be better to give a specific instead of just like all the hypotheticals. Like maybe what's one thing that I know? What is, I mean, you claim to know that it was genuinely God. How do you know that? Well, because God has spoken in his word and God has revealed things about himself. But how do you know it was God? How do you know it wasn't an imposter? I mean, that's that's the answer, because God so is just because, a circular reasoning. God, well, there shouldn't be an issue with circular reasoning from an atheistic worldview. But even so, I'm not appealing inside of myself. We're all technically in a circle, but I'm not in a vicious circle. The difference is, is you're appealing within yourself and it's a circle within yourself, but you can't test anything. I'm appealing outside of myself. I'm appealing so, to God. So there's a d difference between uh, a, a circle and... Self-evident. So how is it self-evident that it's God? Well, I don't have to know how to know that God. So, for example, I don't have to know how God made a tree to know that God made a tree. So I don't so know how, how, does, I don't how, know how come, God does every single thing that God does. How come I, I do can know. trust? How come I can trust you when you say that, but I can't trust a Muslim or a Hindu when they say the exact same thing? Well, do you want to? Are you going to become a Muslim? Because that's not really. How a, am I a, supposed to choose? If, do what? if they, they say the exact same thing, I've talked to them. Well, right. But they that's say, right. But that's, but they say God has talked to me. I know God is real because I experienced God. And they have a different God than you. Right. But the, the, so two things. The topic of the debate is atheism, not even Christianity. The topic of the debate is can atheism account for objective morality? Not Christianity. But aren't, aren't you but arguing I will, but from I will the impossibility of the alternative? I am arguing from the impossibility of the alternative. So, so am I. So you're arguing from the, the impossibility of... Well, I mean, I'm doing both. Start, if you don't start with atheism? Well, I'm saying that your alternative is impossible, and I'm also presenting my alternative. Right, but you said that you could be wrong about everything that you claim to know. But back to the initial question that you were asking. Two things. The topic of the debate is atheism. The second thing is, are you going to abandon your atheism to argue for, say, the Hindu or Muslim faith? If not, then there's no need in wasting time arguing about hypotheticals. No, if because they, they, they all give me the same different. answer. So. Right, and they, they all give you the same answer, but the difference is, is doing internal critiques. But we're not going to get into a, an internal critique of the Muslim faith right now because you're not a Muslim. So there's no need in doing that. 
well, to me, the position of Islam and the position of Christianity are equally invalid, and they're both Absolutely. making the same arguments. Absolutely. And so Absolutely there's not. no distinction. Absolutely. Uh, so how can we have, why can't we reason without God? Two plus two will equal four, whether God sure. says so or not. Two, we can do that without because, knowledge of God. We did Taylor, it before the knowledge of Christianity. How can you explain that? Because Taylor, in order to even make sense of the sentence that you're saying, you're assuming certain things that are not. Explain that. So when you when you bring up the laws of mathematics, for example, you're appealing and using things such as you're assuming the reliability of your senses, you're assuming that logic, you're assuming assuming absolute standards of logic, not just logic, but absolute standards. You're assuming these things that atheism cannot account for, which is why the debate has to go back down to the platform and see who's consistent with what they're standing on. In atheism, I don't understand how two plus two can't be anything that you want it to be. Because if I have one and one, that's two. I can't just make it three. Right. And how, I feel right, like and, it. right. But and Taylor, God how, could. Right. And no, no, he couldn't actually, because logic is a reflection of God's mind. But how, how do you um, know that? Because God is revealed so in his word. So, um, so if God, uh, so you think logic is a reflection of God's character. So no, it's a reflection. Thievery, of God. No, no, it's a reflection of God's mind. Morality is a reflection of his character. Okay. So God is not a thief because, or thievery is wrong because God is not a thief. Correct. So what if God was a thief? Well, that's an impossible hypothetical uh, because God's revealed himself in his word and he, he is what he is. That's his ontos. It's his being. Why so, is he the way he is? Why did he choose? To not I don't, be a thief. I don't have the I don't have the answer to that. It's Does he have a good reason for that, or is it just kind of a random position that he just kind of landed? He flipped the uh, coin and just no. See there. that is, that assumes certain things that are not real. It's it's entertaining so, hypotheticals. God's so did he on, have a good you know, reason you know on, or not? Do you know what on toss is? There was no reason. Do you know what on toss is? His being. Yeah. Okay. Well, if if you know that, then there's no reason to ask that question because. So it's, what's the reason for being? Why there, is isn't, he the way there, he isn't, is? there isn't a reason. That's so it's just, just random. That, that's, that's literally definitional to ontos. That's like a. It's like we're getting at a tautology here. That's it. Yeah, that so is. Just, that's who he is by definition. That's just who he is. I don't have the answer to that. That's just who he is. That's who he's revealed himself as. So you can't show whether it's the real God or whether he is good or not. Or No, I can show that it's the one true God because he says all the other God are, gods are idols. Yeah, so do all the other gods. Right. Okay, and again, this isn't a position for, for atheism. This isn't support for atheism. Do you want to take? Do you want to leave that position and go to Flying Spaghetti Monster or whatever other position there is and we can argue that? None of this is an argument for atheism, which is why I don't get why we're entertaining the hypotheticals. The we can debate Baha'i, Unity, Islam, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons. We can debate all that stuff all day, but there's no point in really doing that if you're not actually going to put forth what you actually hold to. You seem to be I mean, wanting to go to, well, so-and-so says this, and so-and-so says this, and they can say this, and they can say this. And you're right, they can, and I can refute those things, but that's not what the topic of the debate tonight is. Well, it demonstrates that you don't have an argument because they make the same argument. And right. And I can it's show false it. when they do right, it, but right. your and special it, plead, it's, no, it suddenly becomes correct when you do it. No, no, Taylor, I'm not. That's not what I'm saying. I can refute those positions. I can show you the internal inconsistencies. I'm not going to sit here for the next hour and a half and refute Hinduism, Mormonism, Muslims, Baha'i. So, I'll give you one, for example. I can show you. If well, I just have would, another would, question. So why isn't 50 billion uh, kids burning for eternity. How is that consistent with your worldview? Um, if they were never even given the chance to even hear or uh, the gospel or uh, reach the age of reason. Okay, so two things. How, where'd you get that number from? That's kind um, of that's kind of rhetorical. You're it's, saying it's been estimated that there have been about 105 billion births uh, since the dawn of okay. history. Well, the consistent um, answer. Well, the consistent answer from the Christian position is that all people, including children, are fallen sons and daughters of Adam. They're sinners. We're born into the world with a bent towards sin. So, so how is that compatible with um, morality or free will to create something well, I don't, flawed I don't, and then well, judge it flawed and well, I don't, throw I, it in the trash? Okay, That's so not starters, consistent with any moral system. Okay, I, for starters, I don't affirm free will probably like you're saying it. I'm a Reformed Baptist. So I, I'm a Calvinist. I don't affirm 
free will in the sense that you're probably thinking. But B, okay. um, what was the second part of your question? Well, I had um, I had another question about, so why, how is it, sorry, I, I kind of lost my train of thought. I'm not sure what the second part was, but um, how is it a moral system to judge people not on moral actions, not even on sins and violations of the moral code, but judge them solely on what God they believe in. How's that a moral system? That, that in and of itself is a sin. It's idolatry. What is a sin? Believing in other gods. It's called idolatry. But that's not a moral sin. It's not going to hurt anyone. It's not. Yeah, it does. It offends God. Okay. Well, that's pretty pathetic. Well, I mean, says you. I mean, okay, so what? He, he's supposedly the greatest being of all time, but he's offended that I don't believe in him while he's hiding from me. That doesn't seem to comport with any. That, well, well, that, that's th why your position is seems self-contradictory to me. Well, two things. So you're making yourself the standard, which is the, the first problem. The second thing is um, he hasn't hidden himself from you. So Romans chapter one says that all people know God exists. It's in a well, general. Well, then it's thing. wrong. Because no. I don't know that. Well, how do you know that that's true? Because without it, you couldn't make sense of any of the dialogue that we're having. He's the necessary starting point. We can still talk without ever, ever hearing God. People talked and reasoned before Christianity existed. Right. And I'm not saying that, again, this is what I was getting at with this is the evidence that people know that God exists. These transcendentals that we assume that you can't make sense of without God. So people, Romans 1, real quick, Romans 1 says that all people know God exists. It doesn't mean that they're walking around saying, I know Jesus Christ is God and I'm just not going to admit it. That's not what it is. But I it, don't know that. So um, right. how well, do you, well, how well, do you yeah, let support me, that with reality? A couple minutes. Just let me finish on this because this will answer your questions. It says rather that everyone knows God exists because I'll use a term that you said earlier. It's self-evident that two things. He says through the creation and through the conscience. God has placed certain things within us um, such that we can know that he exists and we can look out at the creation and see that there's a designer. Now, so why did someone have to tell you about it? You don't just know this. You had to be told. About no, 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 Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. No one had to tell me don't rape women. It was exactly that's was what I'm saying. Yeah, and it was you can figure that out without God. No, no, no. So no, why no. did you need to be told about God and all this other stuff? No, Taylor, in order to figure that out. Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. Let me finish. The evidence that you know God exists is because you're appealing to things that without him, you can't make sense of. You've already you, admitted earlier, you already admitted earlier that the one thing that you know for certain, you could be wrong about, which means that you don't actually know it. No, I said and the one thing was the, uh, the law of non-contradiction. Right. And then when I pressed you on it, you showed that actually you could be wrong. You said this could all be a simulation. That's what you yeah, said. Yeah, I'm not omniscient. Right. So that shows that everything for the next 10 minutes now, you've made all sorts of knowledge claims. The evidence that you know God exists is the fact that you've done that. You've assumed things that without God, you wouldn't so, be able to assume. Well, we have to assume it is until it's proven that it is right, necessary. So how right. is God necessary to logic? I'm still right, not seeing right, the bridge of that gap. Right. Okay. That's borrowing from God. That, that's 10 minutes right there. All right, Miles, you got 10 more minutes to cross examine um, Taylor. Cool. Um, ooh, let's see. You said a personal God's will is simply not sufficient criteria to be objective. Um, where did you get that uh, God, morality comes from simply God's will? Uh, you're saying God is the foundation of all logic and morality. Is, right, but you said that. Is you're, that you're, not. Right, uh, you, good you, phrasing. Right, but you essentially said that morality comes from simply His will, making it sound as though it's subjective to God said this is bad, this is not. This is bad, this is not. Yeah, because so, otherwise, then. But that's the, well, the only alternative is He has reasoned reasons. He has reasoned to His position. No, that's a false dichotomy because that's not what the Bible teaches. The well, Bible, yeah, because other He could be doing it for bad reasons. 
immoral. He could be doing no, it for moral reasons, exactly. or he could be just total chaotic, neutral, total randomness. Well, to even say that, you appealed to some standard outside of God, and I'd like to know where that standard came from, which I know, um, well, let's not go down that path. Again, where in the Bible does it teach, or where does the Christian position, because when you said a personal God's will, I'm assuming for this debate, we're talking about Christianity. We're not talking about every other idea of God. You said that God's will is simply not sufficient criteria to be objective. And I'd like to know where the Bible teaches that morality comes simply from God's will, because that's not what the Bible teaches. Well, uh, I'd be willing to amend that if, as long as we can agree that you're saying that it comes from God. Right, it does, but it's not simply so... God. When you say God's will... That makes it sound like what you're saying is God arbitrarily or just decided this is bad, this is not, and that's not the case. Yeah, that that would be subjective, and uh, so I don't think a good, all-knowing God would do that. I think He would have reasoned positions. Right, but that's so again. No, yeah, that's, why He could explain to you this is why I don't like murder. This is why I don't steal. This is why I don't like thieving. He has in His Word. That's what I'm saying. So the Christian position is not that. Murder is immoral because God's will. The Christian yeah, so he has reasons outside of just that God said it. Correct. It's linked to his ontos. It's by, by definition, immorality is that which is against God's nature. So is that so, so is that then, how can we know that his nature is good? Because he's the standard of good. How he do is, we know that? He is the objective standard. Because unless you, again, this goes back to, this is why we have to address all those things such as non contradictory laws of logic, laws of thought, all those sorts of things. They're relevant to the debate because I would, again, posit that if you don't start there, you can't make sense of even asking that question. Because again, God is not somebody that you can reason to. He's somebody that you cannot reason without. But I've um, been reasoning without God all my life. Right. But that doesn't mean that that doesn't thereby necessitate, okay, God doesn't exist. I agree that you reason. I'm saying but I didn't start with that position. And I, I and I get that idolatry is popular. But what I'm saying is, is that you're doing these things that are inconsistent with what you claim to be standing on. I agree like, that you reason. I agree that you use logic. You're borrowing capital from my worldview. That is that goes back to the question earlier of you saying, I God, I don't know that God exists. That's the evidence that you know he exists. You're evidencing that you're made in his image when you do those things, but it's inconsistent with what is coming out of your mouth. So I'm not seeing a, any distinguishing features between claiming the Christian uh, faith is the basis of all logic and any other religion that claims that. And again, that isn't an argument for atheism, though. But this is a debate about atheism. It's not about Christianity. Correct. So saying, though, that I don't see how all the other religions in the world, it's like when people try and say, OK, I'm an atheist, but um, for the sake of the argument, I'm going to argue for the flying spaghetti monster. That's that doesn't help the case of atheism. Or when they say, oh, well, you're a Christian. Well, you're just one you're one step further down the road than I am. You're an atheist to all the other gods. That doesn't help the atheistic position at all. That actually defeats your position. That's not that's not support for atheism. How? Because it's not supportive of atheism. It's rather supportive of some other deistic worldview. It's just trying to dodge or shift the goalpost. The fact that all the religions make the same arguments and you don't believe them, they but don't. you make a special exception for your religion. Not that at does, all. That's not that doesn't give points to atheism. Not at all, because they don't all make the same claim. Show me any other worldview in the world that teaches that. A, that God comes down to man and not the opposite for one. And two, show me any other religion in the world that says that the rebel sinners, the creation, sets their own house on fire. They're in the house. They don't want anybody to come in and help them. They want to burn their own house down. The creator steps into his own creation. He goes in and saves the people out of the fire who are rebel sinners that don't deserve it. He does so perfectly and then saves them unto himself. Show me any other religion in the world that teaches that. How does that go towards your position? That That's just that, that, random that's, theology. That doesn't show that it's well, said, more logical or no, more true than any other. That's not the argument that I was making by saying that. You said that Christianity is no different than every other religion in the world. So I simply showed 
Yeah, it is. Well, for that it's, argument, it's, that, it's totally different. For but that it, argument it, you were making, of God, God told me. This is sidetracking. This is sidetracking. None of this has anything to do with can atheism account for objective yeah. morality. Yeah, it seems that we're sidetrack a little bit. Let's try to stay on subject. With yeah. The- so, so again, tell me one thing that you know to be objectively morally wrong, and how do you know it? Non-existence. How is that? No, I'm a moral. Is it always wrong for anyone anywhere at any time to um, rape women for mere personal pleasure? Yes. Says who? Well, uh, I could go through the logic again with you, but uh, skipping forward a little bit, it's against the principles of freedom. Okay, so what? So uh, I've reasoned to the position that uh, freedom is a maximization of uh, different uh, existing positions. And what if um, someone reasons, and, what if, and what if somebody reasons to a totally different position? What if somebody reasons to the position? It brings me more pleasure and more enjoyment for me to be able to have sex with whoever I want to have sex with and act okay. however I want to act. And that's the position that I've reasoned to. What if the majority of people reason to that position? Well, that's really easy to demonstrate wrong because it uh, produces mul- mutually contradictory results. So one person says, well, okay, so they're I both- like it. The other person says, I don't like it. Um, there's only one way to objectively solve that issue, and that's to have the same rules for each person. Okay, so where, who chose those rules? Uh, no one chooses them. Okay, then where did they come from? Logic. Okay, and again, now we're back in the same... See how the circle is vicious? So now well, we're which, back in the same position. Which, I mean, I can I, put back up the, if, if the premises. You, know, you, you can put those up, but it doesn't answer the question. Because we have two people. One of which is saying they reason to one thing, and you're saying this is what's logical. What if the other person is saying, no, this is what's logical? You're appealing to an absolute standard and acting as though it's some ethereal thing off in the ether somewhere that's just kind of there and self-existent, almost like God. So my question again stands, how do you know that the person that says, um, I like to torture children because I get pleasure out of it? How do you know that that's wrong? Ultimately, objectively, always, because it's, that it's always wrong, a, no matter what, because it relies on a subjective standard, and so you can get nope. They said different they, results. Nope, nope. They said that they reason to that th- uh, through their logic. Well, you can't because I just showed that that reasoning is invalid because you can get contradictory results from it. Right, and they said the same exact thing, but it's just mirrored. What they said, they would say that what you're saying. Yeah, is people non- can be wrong in their arguments, though. Yeah, and again, where's the standard of right and wrong? I, I can say I reasoned to anything, but uh, unless you have the premises and the actual logical format and each premise is valid, then you haven't right. really done your job. Right, and so again, it's subjective. That's subjective. That's not objective. Logic is not subjective. I agree. But again, what you just said, this another person could say the exact same thing and say and come to a totally different conclusion and you don't have a standard to actually appeal to that is objective outside of yourselves Logic. it's two people that are caught in a circle within themselves there isn't a standard outside of yourselves it is it's logic right but again the logic will either change depending on someone's uh depending on who's uh using it or the logic will be universally applicable so, it, so it's not objective because you said it can change well there there is invalid logic and then there is valid logic okay so, so what we're talking about is an you, objective system that doesn't yeah, change right and how do you, and how do you determine that from your worldview how do you determine that it's objective well because it gives the same result no matter which subject we pick no matter if it's god if it's the hobo or if it's donald trump or if it's you or me all right, that's 10 minutes for Miles. 10 more minutes for you, uh, Taylor. Okay. Um, so I'm still not understanding. Can you connect how God is necessary to logic? Um, because You're presupposing that he is the source of it. Like, how can in, you establish that? Because in order to even do that, there's things that are assumed. And without God, you can't make sense of those things. So again, we're all in a circle. I agree that we're all in a circle. The difference is who's in a vicious circle and who's not. At a certain point, we all are 
in some sort of circular reasoning. The difference is I'm I'm appealing to something outside of myself. You're not. I'm, I'm appealing to logic, which is outside of myself. I don't right, but in order to do that, that make this logic work. Right, but in order to do that, you have to appeal to your senses. And you said earlier that this could all be a simulation. Well, so I actually didn't appeal making, to senses at all in, in any of my premises. You didn't what? I didn't appeal to senses at all in any of my premises. Right, I know you didn't appeal to them, but you're using them. That's the point. In Not in the argument. But, but right now, man. Right now, you're using your senses. You said earlier that yeah, this so, could. You said earlier that this could all be a matrix. I asked one thing that you know for certain. You said that you appeal to the law of non-contradiction, but then said that this could all be a matrix, which means that the one thing you claim to actually know, you don't actually know because if you knew it, you w couldn't potentially be wrong about it. You know it. No, because the matrix still can't break the law of non-contradiction. Right, but um, all of your thoughts could simply be misfirings going off in your brain for all that you know. And all of your conversations with God could be misfirings in your brain going No, out. no, because again, for you to you make that... all the time. Look, look, you look, would Taylor, say that to a Muslim. Wouldn't Taylor, you tell that to a Muslim? <laughs> you're standing on a platform. You're then imploring your platform to me. Which is no. What would you tell a Muslim who said, I have direct experience with God? I would take that Muslim to the Quran and I would say, okay, do you believe that the Bible is a previous revelation from Allah? Specifically, the Injil, which is the Gospels, the Pentateuch, and the Psalms. They would say yes. I would then say, okay, do you believe that in Surah 6 or maybe Surah 9? I'd have to look up uh, which Surah is. I would say, do you believe that it says in Surah 6 or Surah 9 that previous revelations for, or do you believe that the bible is a previous revelation from allah they would say yes i would say do you believe in surah 6 or surah 9 that it says that um the bible is a previous revelation from allah they would say yes and then i would say do you believe that the the uh, quran says later in uh surah oh i can't remember which one but hypothetically speaking let's just say it was surah 10 because it does say it. I just can't remember which surah it is. I would say, do you believe that it says that pre the words of Allah cannot become corrupted? They would say yes. I would then demonstrate to the Muslim that because the big content point of contention between us and Muslims is that they don't believe Jesus is God. That is a central foundational difference between Christians and Muslims, and it is a deal breaker. It is a hill worth dying on. It is an essential truth to the Christian message. So I would then say, or go to the book of John or the book of Mark, and I would show them where, for example, Thomas fell down and bowed down before Jesus and said, my Lord and my God, after seeing the holes in his hands of the risen Savior. He then worshipped him and Jesus didn't rebuke him. Muslims believe in their worldview that Jesus was just a prophet. And they also taught that prophets would never receive worship because there's only one true God. Somebody who worships an idol in their religion is worthy of death. They also think they, he's the Messiah. Do what? They also think he's going to eventually be the Messiah. Um, that ir irrelevant. I would then show them that Jesus was worshipped as God. At that point, nine times out of ten, I have yet to see a Muslim that says anything different than this. So if they said something different, I don't know where the conversation might go because there's hypotheticals. But they so would say are they hallucinating. They would say the Angel, no, they would say that the Injil has become corrupted. And I would then show them, okay, well, the surahs say that the Injil is a previous revelation from Allah. Because the Bible is true, the Quran, therefore, cannot be, can, be true. I would show them the, the inconsistency. But this is pointless to the debate of can atheism uh, account for objective morality? You keep wanting to shift the goalposts so to you, other religions, which is pointless. Because atheism stands against all religions. So they right, were wrong that, about their true. experience with God. That's irrelevant. So arguing, what you're saying is that we Muslim, have to... Hold on, I'm asking Muslim, a question. Right, but you're not a Muslim, so there's no need to argue. Yeah, I, I, I'm saying that all your positions are mutually uh, contradictory. Wrong. I just demonstrated so, the inconsistency of, of... So what you're saying is you are able to reason to God. It's not just you feel it. No, no, I'm, I'm not reasoning to God. I'm yeah, starting you're with... You're using God. reasoning no, I, to prove them wrong and to say that ours is correct. Right, and I have a, um, and I have a reason. Their, their experience with God was a hallucination. I'm not sure what you would say to uh, a Hindu saying that they had a direct experience with Krishna. Or they saw one of their uh, their bodies, or you know, whatever they call them, uh, and performing again, miracles. And none of this is in support of objective morality for atheism. It's if uh, you wanted to demonstrating that you can't atheism, 
let's get on in a couple weeks. Marlin can set it up and you can take the Hindu position and then we'll go down the road of Hinduism. You, we can sit here and waste a bunch of time talking about other religions and I can show you the inconsistencies. I've studied- It's, it's demonstrating I've your special a lot of competing world religions, man. I came out of Eastern religion. So we can talk about that all day, but that's irrelevant to objective morality. What does Hinduism and the falsehood of Hinduism and the Muslim faith have anything to do with morality in the atheistic worldview? Because you're ma- because you're the argument you're hanging everything on is special pleading. No, it's not special pleading. No, yep. absolutely not. And even mm-hmm. if it was, the atheistic worldview has no reason to uh, to that's inconsistent with your own worldview. There's no reason for special pleading to be wrong in an unguided, unpurposeless. Uh, no, because logic process. still exists in my worldview. But you can't even account for it, man. You, you yeah, said, I can. You said earlier two things that you said earlier that totally refute that. That this is could be a matrix, which means that the one thing you said that you know you're for certain on, you could be wrong about. And two, your worldview can only account for the the physical realm. There's, your worldview cannot account for transcendence like logic, things that exist outside of time, space, regardless of where you're at, when you live, etc. cetera. Uh, just regardless of whether we live in the matrix or not, I know all I need to know about logic is everything in logic stems from the law of non-contradiction. And how do you know so, that? You just said earlier that you can Because be if wrong. something, if anything exists, whether it's a matrix or a hallucination or anything, something exists. It's kind of like, I think, therefore I am. Right. You know at least that much. Right. And to do that, how do you know that your reasoning faculties are working correctly? You could just be. Well, we can follow. I mean, there are entire fields studying just logic. Yeah. And they're assuming where to begin with uniformity of nature and induction. They're using their senses to do it. Do you not see how that's a vicious circle, man? This is what happens with atheism, man. When you reject God, you're reduced to futility. I don't need senses or anything. I don't need to know that my senses are accurate. But you're reasoning to make any fact, of these arguments. You're using your reasoning faculties to make these claims, man. Yeah. That's so right. which premise is right. incorrect? So how do you know that your reasoning faculties are working correctly? If because you're if the premises are valid, mutations over millions, billions of years, your brain could just be feeding this information to you right now. That's what's consistent with your worldview, not what I profess. And we can test our. Knowledge and you of have reality, to, you have, and your you have no explanation for and why. You have to use your senses and your reasoning faculties to do those things. That's the vicious circle. You're stuck inside yourself. You can never know if anything that you're claiming is actually true or accurate. And your one That's argument, to, your one argument that says that uh, you know God is accurate, relies on. Your senses, and that's consistent with my worldview, not yours. It's not that's consistent with reality, though. But you could be again. You're imploring your reasoning faculties and your senses to say that anything that you say moving forward could be just misfirings going off in your brain. But using your logic, I can just say I know atheism is true. Logic imparted it to me, right? From my born. worldview, that's consistent with my worldview. It's not consistent with your worldview. But I could make that my worldview anytime I wanted. So you'd abandon atheism then. So the the debate tonight is over. No, if I, if I abandoned that, I mean, it sounds like you already have, man. With with Hinduism and Muslims and all this other stuff, and if you wanted to, so the same reason I don't with, believe them is the same reason I don't believe you. That somehow disproves atheism. No, what disproves atheism is the fact that a God says that all people know that He exists, but b you've evidence tonight. That How do you know you're? Dependent- you're re- that you're How do you know you're upon? reliably uh, getting that information? Because God has said so. Exactly. Special pleading. The word of God. Other now religions that, that say God said this. And I can show so you the inconsistencies. It's an invalid their, argument that you're making. No, and I can show you the inconsistencies of their worldview. Again, with like Muslims, for example, another inconsistency. It doesn't matter if they're inconsistent. How can you tell me that yours is consistent if you can't even tell me you know? Well, you say you know, but you can't tell me how you know. You so because I do now. So because I can't tell somebody, for example, how um, electricity works or gravity works, that means I can't know that it works. Well, if you showed me a god, then you wouldn't have to tell me how it works. You could just show me that it exists. We can that's, do that with electricity. That's a red herring. That's has no. That has nothing to do with what I was saying. You said that simply because I don't know how something is done, that means I can't know it. All right, that's ten minutes. That specific or- one. All right, that's 10 minutes is up for Miles. All right, next person. No, 10 minutes up for Taylor. 
Next person is Miles. Go for it for your final 10 minutes cross examination. Um, let's see. You said God can give if God can give good reasons for his system, or he gives random or bad reasons, something along those lines. Sorry, I was trying to type a bunch of stuff really fast. But you said something about God, if God can give good reasons for his systems or give random and bad reasons. Um, what are, where are you getting your standard of good and bad from? Um, I'm using the English definition of good. So that is essentially referring to either, um, you know, armor is good for protecting your body. Right. Or okay. And good being um, preferable to something else. So, and why, you, and why is that the standard? Well, that's the word in English. Right. But why is that the standard? Why somebody in English could have came up with it's good for um, us to um, kill all black people, or it's good for us to kill Jews, which people did in history. So why is the because a, a committee or a, a company? created a definition or a society of people created that definition. Why is that objectively good? Well, you just described subjective good. Okay. Well, but you did, you appealed to the definite, the dictionary definition. So I want to know why is that the standard? Yeah. So there's an objective interpretation of good. Which okay. Is where did that, right. And where did that come from? Well, it's mine. Well, then it's so not I'm, a, then I'm it's deriving not a, it from, that's, it's that's, that's consistent with objective. Yeah, so it's consistent with the definition, hey, the English definition of good. And so we're separate. All I'm doing is separating, taking the subjective definition out of it. So all we're left with is the objective definition. Okay, so did you hear yourself? Yeah, it, I took right, subjectivity out of it, which is how you be, get objectivity. Right, but not because you're appealing to yourself. You're the standard is what you're saying. You're ultimately no. saying yes. Because some, the no. same, another person could come along and do the same thing you just did, but come to a totally different conclusion. There's nothing outside of yourselves. And yet we could check the validity of that conclusion with logic. Right. And Okay. And this, again, goes back to the same dance that we were doing earlier, which I don't want to do. There's some other things that I want to get to. Um, uh, let's see. You said theistic morality is subjective. So for the sake of this debate, we're talking about obviously Christianity. So you're saying Christianity, more, Christian morality is subjective. Um, can you show somewhere in the Bible where um, the Christian uh, position of morality is subjective? Well, for example, when God orders genocide. Um, but to be clear... Christian morality can be objective if you're saying that God reasoned to his positions, but if you're saying that it's just just because that is God's nature, because it's God's will, that's what's subjective. Okay, says who? Logic. Logic says that um, the, the, the... Well, the definition the, of objective applies to logic. Of God's nature being immoral, logic says that that is subjective? Yes, if the answer an, changes non, depending on the non, subject, then it's subjective. That is a non sequitur. That does not logically follow at all. Yeah, it does. So if you take the premise of what objective no. means, or what Object subjective means, and Object then you... So objective means, in terms of morality, it's not influenced by personal feelings, interpretations, or prejudice. Yeah, so, so the Christian position of morality is that it's, it's it has nothing to do with God's interpretation, his own personal feelings, or prejudice. It has to do with that is which is not his nature. So how is so again, I'm saying again, that there's again, a reason that his nature is a certain way. There's a reason he understands what good is and why. Right, but that doesn't logically he could define that. it for us. He's not just going to say, well, just because I said so. Right, and he does in his word. So when you said theistic morality is subjective, the Bible doesn't the Bible doesn't say that. So theistic morality is not or Christian theism is not morally subjective. Well, I'm not arguing from the Bible. No, I know that, but you made the claim. You claimed theistic morality is subjective. Yeah, so if which it's, is not the, if which it's is not based the, on an opinion or feeling of God, it isn't. Then it's subjective. But it's not. So then logic lies outside God. 
that again is a non sequitur. That doesn't logically follow at all. No, because he can't change his positions, can he? What do you? What do you? He's mean? locked by logic. He's not going to suddenly decide that rape is no, good. Shit. He's no, there's no, a reason he's not changing. No, his man, this is, why I asked, no, no, no. this is why I asked if you know what ontos is. It's not that he's locked by logic. Logic is merely a reflection of who God is. God is logical. God is not illogical. God can't make a square circle. God can can't make a rock. Can, or can he choose to be something else? What do you mean by choose to be something else? Can he choose to change his nature? I mean, that's a, again, that's like, that's illogical. No. Right. So Logic is a reflection of his He's mind. locked. No, it's in it's, his it's, current it's, positions. That's his on toss. It's his being. It's like saying, mm -hmm. Taylor, so because you can't become a bird, that means therefore that um, you are not logical. That's essentially what you're saying. Because God can't change his nature, therefore he's illogical. There are reasons outside of me and my mind that I can't become a bird, and there are reasons outside of God that he can't change his nature. Right. No, there, it's not reasons outside of himself. This, again, goes back to God's ontos. It just, that's what he is. I don't know why. I but mean, you're just saying that, and you can't or demonstrate it or even reason to it. Right, because in order to even reason, Taylor, you have to presuppose God. No. Nope. the whole contention of what I was saying earlier. No. Nope. Entire civilizations yeah. have reasoned without presupposing God. And they're made in God's image, and that's exactly why they can. Romans 1 talks about that. We suppress the people suppress the truth in their unrighteousness. They lift up other worldviews, other so-called gods, in suppression of the God that they do know, because it ultimately comes down to the fact that they love their sin. And so they try and lift up other worldviews, other ideologies, and little do they know they're actually borrowing from God in order to do those things. You haven't if you acted, just you claim haven't acted, that you have dominion over logic, which anyone can do. Do what? If you just claim you have exclusive dominion over logic, which anyone can do for any worldview. Right, but God doesn't just merely claim it. Where is he then? What do you mean, where is he? Why doesn't he come down and tell us himself? He did. Why does he need you? He did. And he, he, he didn't. didn't. He doesn't need me. Absolutely not. He has through multiple means. He has through the person of Jesus Christ. And then why is Christ. his failure rate over 99% for conversion? What do you mean his failure rate? So that, that question. But all of humanity, most people have not been Christians, have not even had the chance to be Christians. Right. Your question, right now, most so, people are not Christians. So what? So why is your God's failure rate so high? That's not a failure If, if you're rate. saying your, he's, your question, he's placed it on our hearts, he's communicating with us. Why can't, why is, do most people are completely unaware of this? So two things, the Christian position. And again, we're getting off into rabbit trails, which is away from, you have the affirmative. You're affirming this, this debate is not about Christian um, morality or can, can the Bible, can the God of the Bible, um, is, is he a moral monster or anything like that? But I will answer the question. So two things, there's a general revelation of God, which he's placed in all people in our conscience, in our heart, and he's given us the word. There is a special revelation that he's given to believers. Your question assumes that God is trying to save all people, and he fails in doing so. I don't affirm that position. The Bible doesn't affirm that position. Then he's I evil. believe God, I, no, it's according then you, to Then you have no moral standard? system. Again, nope, you're appealing to a standard of evil that you can't account for. It's subjective, and you're saying the God of the Bible is a moral monster because whatever, and my my question to that would be, so what? God's not well, trying to save everybody. God's going to be glorified in the demonstration of his justice, mercy, grace, love, wrath, all his attributes. God will be glorified in the demonstration of his just punishment towards sinners. And he'll be glorified in the salvific work of saving those whom he sent his son to pay the penalty for. But so he doesn't punish saying, sinners. Saying, he only punishes disbelievers. Which are sinners. But he doesn't punish most sinners, or at least, or he doesn't punish the sinners that get into heaven. So it has nothing to do yeah, with sin, right? Because sin he's is only be punishing the one sin of uh, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. No, no, he's not. Sin is a is a legal problem. So sin is equated to legal debt. So sin is the transgression of God's law. It's a legal problem, and he does punish for my sin. Uh, and all the people who he saves, he did punish them for their sin. He punished Jesus Christ on the cross. So legal debts can be transferred. So I believe in penal substitutionary atonement. Jesus paid the penalty that I deserve. 
He paid the penalty that every other person who believes will deserve. Um, and uh, my sin was atoned for that way. It wasn't that God just winked and it disappeared. All right. That's 10 minutes is up. All right. Uh, Taylor Gray, you have your final 10 minutes to cross-examine uh, Miles. Okay. So um, you, you value consistency in your worldview, right? Absolutely. I believe God is most glorified when we are consistent. So there is no consistency to the punishment method. Um, there's no consistency to allowing anyone to exist before salvation was even an option. And there's absolutely no consistency in punishing based solely on a, on a, essentially a trivia question is whether or not you were convinced by this specific religion. And it's over 99% unconvincing. Absolutely so, not. That's absolutely not. That's not what the Bible teaches. How is that not inconsistent? Because that's not what the Bible teaches. It's a that's strong. You, it's a that's strong what you said this entire debate. Good, but that's not what the Bible teaches. I nowhere did I say that the that salvation is based on a trivia question. Nowhere. That's, what I, I, that's how I characterize it. Right. I know that you. Right. It's, that's how you characterize it. That's a, that's a straw man. It's a caricature. That's not what the Bible teaches. That's and that's not what I believe. So, so how, what is the moral weight of believing in a God? It amounts to a trivia question. Absolutely. How not. am I? How am I a less moral person than you just because I have a different God than you? Because you're an idolater. That's why. Why is that immoral? Because God said so. Right. And so, and it's, and because it's, God said so is all you have, but no, you can't even you can't even back up. Well, I'm, how I'm, do you know that I'm God trying, is reliable? I'm, I'm trying to finish, but let me break it down this way. Let's say this: the Christian position is this. It's not based on simply a trivia question. Here's the Christian framework. We're all working in a system. That's why I kept trying to go back to platforms. So if you let me finish just two minutes and then I'll let you respond. Well, let me finish this whole thing so I don't lose my train of thought. The Christian position is this. You and I are both sinners before God. The framework is that we are in rebellion against God. We don't want anything to do with God. God is going to allow many people to essentially he'll give them enough rope to hang themselves with. C.S. Lewis, I think, said it that the gates of hell are locked from the inside. God doesn't have to force anybody to go to hell. And um, your question seemed to assume almost that all these people want God, but God just doesn't place, doesn't, doesn't draw them to himself. And that's not the Christian position. The Christian position is that all people are fallen sons and daughters of Adam. They're in rebellion to God. And God chooses out of his kindness to be merciful to some. It isn't a matter of getting a trivia question right. It isn't a matter. That, that's not at all what it is. You have a stony heart that needs changed. You have a you have a, a heart that needs turned towards God, or you'll never turn to Christ. I know that you'll never believe unless the Spirit of God miraculously does a work within your heart. That's the Christian position: is that the Spirit saves who the Spirit will save, and it's my job to merely proclaim the message, and God will do what God is going to do. Now, if you want to say that that's immoral, or that's this, or that's that, I mean, you're fine to say that. You have every right to say that, but it really holds no weight because it's subjective. It's not objective. So there's no free will then, there is there? Well, it depends what you mean by free will. So I'm a compatibilist, if you know what compatibilism is. But I don't hold free will in the traditional American Christianity sense of God's done all that he can do. Now the ball's in your court, and it's up to you now to make the choice. That's not historic Christianity. So how is it consistent to say that uh, you have a stony heart and you're, you need to burn in hell because you don't have the right God. How is how does that? That's that's not why you deserve hell because you're a sinner. You've broken the law of God. It's a legal problem. So if I were to go out, for example, and murder somebody tonight, the law. So he made us sinners. The law requires that I be punished for that. God is just. It's part of His nature. So. And so my argument is, your system circumvents any justice system at all, and just gives a get out of jail free card to anyone who happens to just get lucky absolutely and be not. born into your religion. Absol absolutely not. And it's not being born into the religion. No one's born into Christianity. Everybody that's a Christian was saved by the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, well, then how come but, most Christians are raised by Christians and people who aren't raised by Christians tend not to be Christians? That's the genetic fallacy. That's a false equivalency. I wasn't that is not the genetic fallacy. Absolutely. Saying that somebody's going to be a Christian because they were born. That's saying that the car, that the engine is blue because the car is blue. Yeah, it seems that we're venturing off subject again. Let's try to deter, get back on subject, please. So if we're um, 
So your one argument for the reliability of your senses is unreliable because you can apply it to any other religion, any other claim or position, and you get false positives. So how is your right. how is your claim that you know of God? How is that any different? Well, I've demonstrated already, for example, with the Muslim, but that doesn't help atheism. We need to approach it from the position of atheism. Mm -hmm. you're, standing on, you're standing on a platform that ultimately says all of this is random chance. It sprung up out of nowhere. It's an unguided, purposeless cosmos. You haven't acted at all during this debate. Like you could, like gravity may just turn off at any moment and you could float to the ceiling. You've assumed certain things. You've appealed to logic, but you haven't demonstrated that atheism can even account for immaterial, abstract transcend transcendentals like logic, rationality, etc. And you admitted earlier. Uh, so uh, can you demonstrate for me why God is necessary for all of that without just saying, just assuming that it is because that's your God that you were raised with? Okay, so do you see that in that question, we'll assume certain things? Assume would you, what? Would you agree with that? Well, you're assuming right now that my words are going to mean something five minutes from the same. You're assuming that my words right now meant the same thing five minutes ago. So you're imploring induction. You're imploring um, that I, you're actually you're assuming that your senses are working properly right now. Why that is that exclusively hearing. under the purview of your religion? Well, it's not exclusively under my my religion. It's exclusively to my worldview in terms of consistency. So again, I'm not saying that you're not imploring those things. You are. It's just inconsistent with what is coming out of your mouth about what you believe about the world. Well, it's inconsistent with reality because we know that you could, you and I could both have a, an incorrect experience with God or any God. And in, in order to do that, Taylor, you're using your senses. And you've already said earlier that your senses could be wrong. So what I'm saying is we have to be able to reasonably separate what are hallucinations and what aren't. And we already have to do that, whether God's real or not, okay, whether your God is true or not. And again, do you agree? Don't you agree? Again, you're making claims right now. And well, you, and do you, you agree said, that we have to be able to reason away bad, bad explanations for God and reason to what you're saying? You're, I mean, you are reasoning it. Right, but it's consistent with my worldview. What I'm standing on, that's consistent. It's not. And logic is consistent with my worldview. Absolutely not. Where did you haven't explained at all where it came from, and you haven't explained it at comes all from it existence came. itself. So uh, I've, I've explained this. If I said that about God. You would laugh. You would say that's not an argument. Come on, man. Right, because you can't connect the dots. I can. No, no, you can't. Yeah, you I can. Here's the, the fact. I gave you an ought from an is. Now, here's the, the universe here's, ought to exist because uh, not the alternative is logically impossible. Here's been the train of here's been the train of things. You said earlier, I asked you, what is one thing that you know? You told me you appealed to the law of non-contradiction. You then mere minutes later, maybe seconds later, said that actually I could be wrong. This could all be a simulation right now. We not been, about the law of non-contradiction for an hour and 42 minutes. And you have since then made all sorts of knowledge claims and truth claims. That right there is the evidence, my friend, that you know that God exists. You're mirroring his image. You're trying to be consistent. You're trying to be rational. You're trying to be logical. That is what Romans 1 talks about when it says that all people know God because they're made in his image. You're not a piece of protoplasm. You're not a piece of random chance stardust over billions of years. You have so can you demonstrate why God is necessary to that equation without just saying God exists yep. and therefore. I didn't say he exists therefore. I said because without him, you wouldn't even be able to make why? sense of your question. Why? Because I've just demonstrated it again. No, you haven't because answered why. It, because it assumes things like induction, the uh, reliability of your senses. And uh, you're, you're assuming that that is only possible through your God. Why? Because it, it, you have to start with him in order to make sense of your question. Why? Why do why do birds fly? I mean, it's why it's, do you have to start with God? Because if I don't have to. I can reason without God. No, you you not consistently. You can't because yeah, what you're claiming to stand on is not consistent with what you're claiming. So That's why do you need to start with God? Because if you don't start with him, Taylor, you can't account for all these other things.
Yeah, I can because I can account for the law of non-contradiction and therefore all of logic without assuming God. The platform you're standing on says that all of this is a random chance act, cosmic accident. And you've said that your brain... I've actually said to assume that God exists in this debate. You've said what? I've said to assume that God exists and evolution is false in this debate because that is irrelevant to any of my arguments. My but argument it, stands whether God exists or not. It's not because I'm saying that our, our the way that we get to morality is the same way that God would do it if he if he was a good God. Absolutely. Well, and again, when you say if he was a good God, you're assuming a standard of good that you can't account for. It's subjective. It's not objective. All You've right. just asserted it. All right. That's that. Uh...